we're here to talk about AI today and, and how it's kind of disrupting and changing industries across the board. Um, uh, where is it? Where, 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 would, where, do, where should we be thinking of AI in terms of how it can play into other industries and what it does? Yeah, well, so with AI, you can suddenly take all the data that industries have accumulated, and they have accumulated a lot, and, and clean that data up and, and, and do computing on it to discover new insights. And so where you see that playing out, one of the earliest really in use today practical applications is with call centers where you have natural language understanding and you can augment the humans tremendously. Uh, you see it in financial services with fraud detection, anti-money laundering. Uh, of course, you see it in health with diagnostics. People can uh, anywhere where if you can look at more data than a human in their lifetime might even be able to see and detect the patterns and adapt to, you know, and learn from it, just similar to a human learning from looking at image after image, um, you're going to be able to uh, do things in a way that augments humans very powerfully. So you can detect, you know, one of the examples in, in medicine is uh, diabetic retinopathy, where they can diagnose that from looking at the retina. Um, as well or better than a doctor would be able to. Or Diagnose that you're maybe losing your vision at some point? Yeah, that you have this problem, yeah. Yeah, yeah and you can, if you get it early, of course, you can do something about it. So um, how quickly are things changing right now? What is the disruption factor? I think it's, it's probably one of the fastest changes. I mean, what's happened is historically, we, our computing's always been important, but it was constrained by how the a human could code up an algorithm to analyze and, and uh, you know compute on something. And now you can combine the data with the compute, and the algorithm algorithm can learn from the data. And so once you start doing that, you start getting insights you've never gotten before that can kind of leapfrog what you're able to do. In industry, uh, this is kind of true across the board. You can look at energy, you can look at fin financial services, the media, gaming, um, and, and health is a big one. Retail is using it for customer connectivity. And, and, and once you can do that, you, you can do things more efficiently and you can do things more effectively. Uh, the big challenge industry has right now is integrating it into their current workflows. Mm -hmm. So you can't just throw AI at the problem. You have to thoughtfully make it work with the humans that are there working and the way they already do things and, 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 and adapt it. Uh, China has more patents in AI, they have more startups in AI, and they have more papers published in artificial intelligence than the United States does. Uh, do you think they're beating us on this race with AI? Well, I think that the Chinese government is certainly funding a lot of AI, and, and our, we need to fund AI more. We need to fund research more. The um, I would say we, we have an amazing assemblage of the top AI talent in the world here in the U.S. and, and both sides are working really quickly. Uh, part of AI is having a lot of compute and having a lot of data and the more you have of both, generally the more accurate your results are. And so in China where you have this giant population, they have a lot of data to work on. And uh, so we have challenges in bringing all our data together and, and you know, ensuring privacy of that data. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Here yeah. in the United States, we care about privacy. Uh, China, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> how does that constrain things and how can you do this and ramp up and win at AI without completely compromising people's data? Yeah, I think we're fast developing credible ways to ensure the privacy of data. And I'm sure that's something that will happen here at MIT and other places. And uh, we're also automating ways to bring disjoint data sets together so we can have larger data sets. And actually, there was recently an interesting study done jointly on Chinese da uh, health data for common childhood diseases, where a researcher in the US, I think in San Diego, worked with a Chinese researcher 
and they work together on a 600,000 person uh, patient data set, uh, something that would be pretty hard to come by here. Uh, Joe has a question from back in the studio too. Joe, go ahead. Uh, I'm just wondering at this point, I, I mean, Andrew wanted to ask the question earlier, um, are, are we going to be able to compete, compete just with our system in that the money that's required, be nice if, if we had the, 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 uh, the same type of participation as the, the Chinese have in terms of funding things. Can we do it in this country to the same extent or are we doomed to, to, to be second, do you think? Because <laughs> we're just never going to have that, that type of commitment. I think, I think you know, I think here in the U.S. we've got so much momentum and understanding of what's needed and we've, you know, for instance, part of AI, there's this sort of maxim, no chip, no AI, you know, people are building customized AI chips, so it's the entire stack and the U.S. has been doing, uh, you know, really well there. We have a strong uh, semiconductor industry and so, but the funding is needed. You need huge amounts of compute and you need a lot of uh, research going on and so it's incumbent on our government to to be funding this but I wouldn't you know I wouldn't say uncle it's all over it by any stretch of the imagination